Big Boys Big Neighborhood. Boy. All righty now, man. Warren G in the neighborhood. Warren, it's a pleasure to have you in the Woo! neighborhood. Sure. It's our first sit down today. Yes, you know what I'm saying? First sit down today. Now, Warren, you know, um, I've been a fan first. You oh, know what I'm saying? Oh. And, and it's crazy that we sit here this many years later as we fast forward in our career yeah. and both of us are still here. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I told you years ago, you was like, big, man, I think I'm about to give it up. I said, no, stay in there. Yeah. Okay, I didn't. I'm just, <laughs> just I'm great I was, you know what I'm saying? I, I, was, great I was responsible for any of that. <laughs> but now there, there, you put together a great documentary. Yes, I did. And why did you feel like, Warren, that you you had to tell your story? Uh, Just, you know, like for the, the uh, people like who don't know me, who don't, you know, don't understand what... Uh, artists go through mm -hmm. you know it, because most of the time people like you know like that don't understand hip-hop be like damn man they gangsters they get in trouble and they do this so i did it so they could see what we go through you know on our journey and, and to, to you know as a rapper to be successful mm -hmm. so you know, I, I, I should take them through all the trials and tribulations that man when that you say through. trials and tribulations bro at one point mm -hmm. we were all just kind of you know, dancing mm -hmm. and vibing to the music. Yeah. Not knowing what you guys went through mm -hmm. to give us that great music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what I do want to do is I want to rewind kind of kind of to the beginning. Mm -hmm. And when, when when people say humble beginnings, you, yeah. Nate Dogg, mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg, what was the relationship first with we, Snoop? Man, we uh, it started out in elementary school. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I went to school with him and uh, his brother Jerry, who was Dirty Left, who I mentioned in this DJ. Um, it started from there, you know, uh, elementary school to King Park, uh, free lunch uh, programs, uh, to Pop Warner football, to uh, to high school, and to now. And when do you meet um, Nate Dog? Nate was out. Nate was in the same. Mm -hmm. You know, same. Was it thing. at the same time from it, elementary, or was it, it? It was. It was not. It wasn't elementary. It was more. It was. It was in the uh, the park, the free lunches, and the you know church basketball games and stuff like that. When did you get intrigued by music? Was Was it early on? Yeah, uh, my dad actually used to. Um, when I was real young, he used to bring me over there with him because you know my parents were separated, so I would go over his house and and. Uh, he just played jazz for me all day. I sit down and just chill with him and play jazz all day. I noticed in the documentary yeah. where you would say you would just kind of put headphones on, yeah. and lay on the floor, yeah. And it's yeah. crazy, Warren, because I used to do the same thing where you oh, just yeah. you just get lost in the music, yeah. And I used to love to touch the vinyl and read the liner notes and and hear that's how they amazing. would pan stuff from left to right. And mm -hmm. that's just me as a fan. Yeah. I can't imagine what what that sparked in you to become a producer. Now, yeah. I do want to kind of fast forward to the putting together 213. Yeah. And 213, that's Warren G, Nate Dogg, mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg. Yes, indeed. Was there anybody else that was in it? Because well, that's going to do their own documentary. As far, like, oh, as, far, man. as far as like the artist part, yeah, mm -hmm. that was it. And then we had all our other home. Well, actually, you know what? A uh, Half Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, everybody that was involved with us, Daz, uh, RBX, um, they was all two one three, but but the main guys was me, Snoop, and Nate, and then we had those guys, and then we had uh, all the homies. And this is <laughs> this is before Death Row. Yeah, like when you say Half Dead, you say Dad. So this was already kind of going before. Uh, okay, well, I mean, let me let me rewind. Okay, well, you know, uh, it was just me, Snoop, and Nate. Okay, you know, and uh, everybody else became a well in Half Dead. Mm -hmm. Everybody else became a part of it as we as we grew. How old were you when you guys started two one three? Shoot, I probably was uh, about maybe seventeen, eighteen. And dog, he used to just freestyle. Were you and you were rapping back then as he well? He was doing that uh, since elementary school. When you yeah. say I saw in the documentary where you say you kind of just set up the battles, yeah, and yeah. he was good at freestyling, so you would just kind of point things out, yeah, and dog would just just go in on it. I was trying to find who was the hardest and whoever in the school who's the hardest, let's go get him. And you would say that dog would lose, he would kind of lose focus too because it yeah. got to a point where it was like, man, yeah. it's no money, it's no this. Yeah. And and dog actually threw away his, his mm -hmm. like a hundred full raps. Yeah. And you got him out the trash. 
pulled them right out. Yeah. What made yeah. you pull those out the trash, Warren? I, you know, I didn't want him to lose. You know, and I, I knew how talented he was, and, and that's what, like, a lot of people was hoping for, for him to give up. So I, I kept pushing for him, you know, because I knew how dope he was. And he wasn't going to give up on it, man, just going to keep pushing. In those times, where were y'all, where was the recognition? Was it just more Long Beach? Was it more local performances? It was Long Beach. You know, we had a, uh, it, <clears throat> from, it went from the VIP to Toe Jam, uh, you know, high schools, rallies. Uh, they used to have this thing called the Milk Bowl. I don't know if anybody mm-hmm. even remember that, but it was like all the high schools and, mm-hmm. and, the, uh, and the Moore League, they would play five-minute quarters at Vest Stadium. It was, it, was the, it was bomb. It was really dope. And uh, that's where we used to have our battles at right there, too. So that, it was that VIP, Toe Jam. Just anywhere we could go where it was hip-hop, mm-hmm. <clears throat> we were, even on the bus. Back of the bus was that was that was a really good, that was a real good. Spot. Did you know how talented and special Nate Dog was back then and before the yeah, world knew? Definitely, what? He, he would just start. He would just like if whatever we was doing, he'd just whatever concept me and Snoop would come up would come up with. He'd just anything if it was you know to tell Mister Telephone or some right. like, <laughs> put the plug on in or, you know like. Just anything, and it'll turn into a, a record. Whatever we was talking about, he'd he'd just enhance it. Even you know, more. with with history though, Warren, it proved to be right. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we 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 hear all these anthems and all these songs, and it was like, yeah, that's a no brainer. But as a 17, 18 year old, all the way to before it gets released to us, mm-hmm. how do you know that this is going to affect the world? We didn't. We mm-hmm. just. <laughs> We didn't. We we was just working, uh, just trying to do good music. So Warren, at one point you're making demos, and it's two one three. Is is Warren G, Nate Dogg, Snoop Dogg. Mm-hmm. All righty. How long were you trying to get those cassette tapes to Dr. Dre? Uh, you know, for a while. Every you know, ever since me and Snoop was doing our thing, I would, uh, you know, try to play our music. Is it a year? Is it two years? Three years? Uh, shoot. Uh, maybe three. Three years. Yeah, three, four, wow. something like that. Huh? And this is, <laughs> and, and with, with those, when we always hear, you know, Dr. Dre's brother, Warren G, mm-hmm. and I've been saying that my whole career. Yeah. And I didn't know until I saw the documentary on yeah. YouTube, Premium YouTube, yeah. I didn't know that it was at the age of eight that. Dre dad, did he marry your mom? Yeah, my dad married married Dre. Oh, mom. so your dad yeah. married Dre's mom. Yeah. That's did y'all crazy. grow up? Yeah. Did y'all grow up in the same house? Yeah. Were yeah. y'all always mom, Go what, ahead. what happened? I got my mom moved me out of Long Beach. Uh because, you know, she seen where I was headed. Mm-hmm. And uh so she sent me to Compton. She sent you from Long right. Beach. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> to move with my dad. Yeah. Oh, wow. and okay, male figure too. <laughs> yeah. I got Long you. To Compton. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, she showed you. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 So I, I was still. Going, I mean, it was the same thing. Mm. You know, it was, it was the same thing. And uh, you know, I didn't have no brother, so Andre and Tyree. You know, that's what. I, that's all I had. So that's them was the them was my brothers, and uh, that's all who I looked up to all my life. So. So when yeah. at one point you're enjoying music and then you see Dre starting to get this spark in music mm-hmm. where it's either listening or you see him starting to yeah. to start to produce. When you see Dre starting to produce and you mm-hmm. see like the early wrecking uh world class wrecking mm-hmm. crew, are you in, in the house at that time and seeing that yeah. starting to go? No, I was I was there before all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh when the high power crew mm-hmm. that was <clears throat> him and easy and, and uh sheen and and uh i was uh, so many people daryl uh cat I, I know if y'all hear this y'all gonna be, everybody i won't well, forget they're gonna be yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but back you know way back then and i was i was you know i asked him one day i was like man can you show me how to do that uh, he was DJing, practicing in the room, and he showed me how to mix. It was a uh, Hashim. Remember, it's, it's time. So he oh, was yeah. showing me <laughs> how to do that. So I would try to learn how to do it. And he he inspired me a lot. Also, you know, mm-hmm. like I said, my dad. Uh, I used to listen to jazz with him, but then, you know, 
Dre being my big brother, I was like, I want to be like him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he sh he taught me. You know, he showed me how to how to uh, DJ and produce. So when you see so Dre cool. go from world class wrecking crew mm -hmm. to when we see NWA, mm -hmm. you're still at the house kind of doing what you do. Yeah. All righty. Were you ever traveling with NWA? Nah. -uh. So I it was, was a separate. Oh, okay, I, I got was you. Too young. It uh, was a separation. I wanted between to. <laughs> what was going down? Well, how old were you at that time? I was. I was. Uh, I may have been around that time. Let me see. Maybe. Uh, with the world class wrecking crew, that I was probably. World maybe class. Maybe thirteen, fourteen, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Thirteen or fourteen. And Did then, you wow. take a pride of like telling other people like, "Yo, yo, that's my that's brother." My brother. Right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> All over the place. I was. I was. Every all the schools I was in, they was like, man. Uh, so we see now that NWA is taken off, and you never did any kind of production or anything for for NWA. You just kind of like putting your your craft together. Um, you know what I, I had had to? She said uh, it was people at school. He let me wear his jacket to school yeah. with the world class wrecking crew wow. purple jacket. You're a damn star. They went huh? bananas. <laughs> like the satin oh, kind of looking star. jackets, like you know, the old Bob Budo, um, and he, and he, team jacket. And he let me wear a swatch watch. <laughs> oh man, hey man, you start doing everything with your left just, arm. You yeah, know I what I'm saying? I, like, man, yeah. I yeah. just had to, I just had to rewind <laughs> on that. Oh, one. That's awesome. But uh, that that was that's uh, so. what was the big thing with that. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Um, what was that? Now, would, now, <laughs> now, you go from where you see NWA is starting to take off, uh -huh. right? And after when NWA is taking off, you're still kind of at the house uh -huh. doing what you do as far as either DJing or now making music. Um, I used to hang out at the studio. Mm -hmm. You know, they would they would let me hang out. Actually, um, anything that you've seen that we know that you saw being recorded or created. A lot of stuff. Uh, it was a lot of just a lot of good music. And, and uh, actually, what was so crazy is that one day I was there. It was me and one of my homegirls. Uh, we was there hanging out, and uh, we did that uh, one one nine one eight hundred to Compton, mm -hmm. where the guy is in the jail cell, is, and, and, and that's that's me. Uh, man, get your hands off! That that was me in the in the uh, in the skit. <laughs> was does that <laughs> oh get gosh. you to where you start thinking of even more skits though? Because I'm uh, gonna fast forward to when even on some of the other skits yeah. that we that we know yeah. people was like man no that was Warren G yeah. though, though, a lot of those skits that we hear is like either the brainchild yeah. of you mm -hmm. or that's you voicing them no that, that was that was me voicing them uh, um, I'm, I definitely learned learned from uh, you know being around draining them up at, at Audio Achievements mm -hmm. uh, which was a studio that where they used to work at and uh I mean, if you're around it, you know, you uh, eventually you become a part of it, you know, and uh, that's that, it, it taught me a lot, you know. So when I did grow as a producer after, you know, Dre showed me how to how to work the drum machine and stuff like that, it it all sunk in and helped me just as far as all my records. Like I want to do it like this because I don't want to do it where it's just not interesting. I want to make it interesting. Dre and him did it like this. So I want to do it like that too, and make it interesting, so people stay into it. Like, there's a a time period mm -hmm. that so many people have tried to do the NWAs, the mm -hmm. you know the, the 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 death rows and everything. And I would have to say that this is, if not the best one that I've seen, because it was told by someone that was really yeah. there, yeah. and it was told by someone who doesn't really talk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like real, like you, yeah. you, you're not a hey man, it's me and then no. like you've always I felt was Warren was one of the most underrated, slept on. You never beat your chest. Nah. I never felt like you know as much as you put in that you always like big. I need to get down there. They owe me. They owe me. You know what I'm saying? It was times we ask you questions and you would just kind of you know laugh or you know <laughs> yeah like that like yeah. that. <laughs> or no, y'all figure good. it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but I do want to say okay now, NWA mm -hmm. is kind of going astray, mm -hmm. and Dre needs to do do the do the Dr. Dre thing. Mm -hmm. And you're at a, a bachelor party, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a cassette tape of 213. Mm -hmm. And you have been trying to get Dre to listen to y'all music for years. 
Yeah. You know, and so the music runs out. They like, all right, we'll put this on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and is that L.A. Dre? Yep, L.A. Dre. L.A. Rest Dre. Rest in peace, man. And yes, so man. with L.A. Dre, he pops it in and Dre says, who is that? And he's like, man, that's your little brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's so, it. And so yeah. now, when did you get the call that it felt serious that Dre wanted you to come to the studio? Because did it he ask serious. about Snoop? It was serious that night. What did he, he say? He said, y'all come to the studio on Monday. And so Dog is not at Snoop Dog's not there. No. What happens when you call Snoop and say Dre want us to meet with him well, on I Monday? Called, I called him and uh, uh, at that at that time it was a lot of people pulling Snoop this way or that way, trying to pull him, trying to pretty much divide and conquer uh, our our group. And uh, so me and Snoop was at it, you know. So I called him, you know, like Snoop, you know, um, Dre heard, heard our music. He wanted us to come to the studio. So he was like, I ain't tripping up. Nah, boom, and he hung the phone up on me. So I called him back like I said, Snoop, please, look, don't hang the phone up, man. Just hold on. Let me call Dre on the other line. So I called Dre phone on the three-way, and I said, Dre, I got Snoop on the phone. Can you tell him that you want us to come to the studio on Monday? So Dre was like, yeah, I want y'all to come to the studio on Monday. Boom, that was it. So Next, he- that Monday we were so charged up. Uh it was the weekend too. We was charged up. We got <laughs> drunk, everything. And uh, that that Monday, my homeboy Rump uh, had an old. I don't even know what kind of car it was, but we used to we jumped in that jumped in his car and rode straight took the streets all the way up to the studio. You know, you get to yeah. the light and you got to put yeah, it. Yeah, because you can't really <laughs> jump on the freeway and yeah. keep, keep it idling or it's yeah. gonna cut off. Yeah. Hell yeah! And he hit it, boop. And we drove all the way to Hollywood. Yes, indeed. So you get there and. Do you, what what's the first kind of sit downs that you guys have in the studio? We went straight in there and Drake put on the uh, uh, Snoop had a song called uh, "Gangsters Life" mm-hmm. and uh, Dre just did a beat right there and he used that uh, that hold on to yeah. your love you got to it was do 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 boom to just that little part and Snoop did a song called Gangsta's Life and after he did that we didn't, we didn't even make it back to the hood yeah yeah it was like <laughs> they it was like y'all kind of just like y'all staying here yeah y'all, y'all. <laughs> yeah so at that time 213 is Warren G that's y'all group yeah 213 mm-hmm. and where does where does Daz corrupt like cause Dre mm-hmm. didn't know in any of them yeah correct mm-hmm. so this is all from like the branch of Warren G. Yeah. You know, so yeah. who do you start to bring down to the studio? Well, it, me and Snoop was with Dre. Um, and after that, we brought Nate to come get down to start getting down with us because he was part of 213. So Nate came and started being with us. Uh, so we all was off the, out of the hood, out off the street, me, Snoop, and Nate. Then Daz, um, Snoop was, was – uh, back and forth in Long Beach and uh, living with his cousin. And Daz stayed with his cousin, too. So Daz was like, I do music, too. So he started doing a little stuff here and there. So we was like, he hard, too. So we brought him. And then I taught Daz how to, just like how Dre taught me, I taught Daz how to work the drum machine. And um, and then uh, from there, but this before Daz, though, uh, we had a, a the, the Roxy used to have, like, little Mike, you know, mm. uh, Mike, Nights, like open mic nights open mic nights up there so uh me and snoop went up there some i don't know i forgot who told us how that it was going down so we went to the roxy and uh that's where we met corrupt you know mm. we snoop was in there rapping doing this thing so we had um they was like he the hardest dude in la right here you know so i was like my homeboy snoop was the hardest dude in la mm-hmm. you know right when here. you say mm-hmm. la yeah. it meant yeah, All everywhere, Long Beach, Compton, yeah. Wise, whatever, uh, you know, everywhere, and uh, so they sized each other up. So what's happening? So what's happening? So they bent, they both bent down on on one knee in front of each other, mm. and uh, they just started busting, going back and forth. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, Snoop, we got to get this in because this nigga is <laughs> he, hey, he going in. So they was busting. Uh, he said something about you got a ring on the finger, and that is true. But if you look at my finger, I got one too. 
I said, whoa, wait. Yeah. So him and Snoop, it was like this. It wasn't no, uh, it, couldn't, could, it couldn't say, okay, he won or he won. So it was like, ooh. Oh, yeah. They didn't nobody say who won. So I went to Corrupt. I said, look, give me your number. I took his number. And as soon as I took his number, I called him. I think it was the next day. Uh, this one, we, we we was back and forth from, from Dre's. We would go to Long Beach, you know, just to hang out. But then we would go back. So we was up at Dre's. And uh, he he give he gave us access. To, he gave us access to uh, uh, the the studio. So we in the studio. I called Corrupt. I said, "Man, come up. I want to do some music on you." So he came up. I did like about a five song demo, and let Drain him hear it. And they uh. was like, Ooh, "We signing you to Death Row." Damn <laughs> the quickness! So Death Row was already a a, a label. Yeah, so when yeah, you guys it, were recording for the Chronic. For Death Row Records. This was right before we started uh, yeah. uh, recording The Chronic. So the vibe in there is everybody just mm-hmm. hanging out. Everybody's loose. Everybody's contributing ideas. A party. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, when when we hear what came from that album, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? This is, you know, how, how does the Lady of Rage get in? How does Jewel get in? You know, like, like are those still Warren G and Snoop and everybody nah, bringing them in? Uh, the Lady of Rage. And Jewel came from Dre. Mm-hmm. Um, Dre had uh, uh, met uh, the Lady of Rage at a at a studio in New York called Chun King, I mm-hmm. think, if I'm not mistaken. And Jewel was I'm, I'm Jewel was just uh, it was the home girl that was uh, that could sing. I, I'm not exactly how I, I'm not I don't know exactly how Dre and, Mich- and uh, Jewel met. But I met her back in the audio achievement days up there when mm-hmm. they was doing NWA. So she came. She was with Dre. When he left, she left. And uh, Dre had rage. And other than that, everything else. Was, what were was the vibes me. like daily when you guys were recording? It was incredible. Chronic. Incredible. Just fun. A uh, lot of laughter. Uh, you know, blazing drinking having a good time just just having a good time just you know just just free you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying just free just just who came up with ain't no fun um as far as the title that that was i don't know but it sound more like snoop right that uh (laughs) and who 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 thought about putting all that together the way that that was Adam, you know what? I I walked in on the session. Mm-hmm. I walked in when they was doing that record, and I told Snoop, I said, "Man, let me bust on that." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they gave me the last verse. Yeah, man. And uh, I was like, "I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to eat this up." And I was like, "Woo! <laughs> hey, now you know. Inhale, exhale with my flow. One for the money, two for the bitches, three to get ready, and four to hit the switches." Oh, that was that, that yeah, was in my uh, Chevy. Six yeah. four rags to be exact. <laughs> if that's one of those everybody oh, know yeah. that song. Yeah. Oh yeah. Song. And no matter yeah. how many years from the date that came out, yeah. that is an anthem. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Super anthem. Yeah. yeah. Did you know then that twenty five plus that it, it would still be? Mm mm. That's crazy. Mm-mm. What I, was we just was trying to do music? Just just we was just doing it. We didn't know. We just wanted people to to just like it. Mm-hmm. We didn't know it was going to take off. We was just doing it just so people could say that's tight. When you still hear it on the radio, like what are the emotions that come through to you? When I hear Regulate, I still get chills. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I was at a, uh, this lady where I was just at before I came here, she was walking in and had her phone playing Regulate. I was like, damn. <laughs> and that took me back to day one. Did she know it was you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. yeah we took a picture. Make sure you guys check out this documentary, man, because mm-hmm. this documentary, Warren, it is so well done. Thank you. You know, and sometimes you'll see these documentaries, they don't get the music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No one wants to talk, yeah. you know, but in this one, everybody had something to say. And it all centered around to how creative and how instrumental mm-hmm. You are in the creation yeah. of what we call not just G Funk, mm-hmm. but what we call that West Coast sound and, and yeah. what people continue mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. eat off of. Yes, and indeed. when we say unsung heroes, mm-hmm. that's exactly what you are, Warren. You know, and I've oh, said yeah. that way before the documentary. Now, with Death Row being 
a label. There was something that was in there, man. Now, for one, you came with a lot of ideas and mm -hmm. a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And 213 was pretty much your group. Mm -hmm. It was all of us. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but Dog Not Here, uh, <laughs> Snoop, and, you know, Nate, rest in peace. So when we say, you know, your, your group, it was y'all group. Yeah. So how do they get signed by Death Row? And the person that kind of, you know, is, as far as glue, when when Dog, when Snoop didn't want to do it, yeah. you held him in. He said mm -hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? Holding on to Nate. Do Nate want to go, you know, do gospel music? Does he want to mm -hmm. do this? Is he, does he want to be in the business? Yeah. How do you not get signed to Death Row? And the others from 213, they do get signed to Death now, Row. I had a contract, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I wasn't just going to sign it. You know, I had Why? One. It had to get looked at, mm -hmm. you know. I, even though I I was just young in the game, I was just like this. I'm not just gonna sign this. It, it need to be looked at. Was the contract handed to you for a signature right then? They didn't want y'all yeah. to see. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I, uh, I told Snoop. I was like, man, don't sign that. You got to get it looked at first, you know. And it wasn't towards Dre. It was like the other people who brought mm -hmm. it. it wasn't towards Dre because Dre. That's that's our guy. Right, right. Dre wasn't the yeah. uh the legal businessman yeah, too. He was, was probably in one himself. Other other guys here. And I was just like, man, don't sign that. And uh I ain't gonna say the name, but somebody went and told uh Shug that I said that. Oh, <laughs> this is the first time I'd ever told, said <laughs> this. Uh and I you know what it, it's cool, but it, it wasn't nothing but uh he was mad, he was mad, he was blood, what what warned you at, blood? And uh I knew I took off. I started running. Yeah. <laughs> and either. he tried he tried to grab me and he fell. Damn. And uh and uh I got to the elevator because it wasn't no stairs. So I'm hitting the thing, do 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 I'm trying to hit the button. And he grabbed me and he was just like, blood, doo -doo. you know, just I'm I'm young, so mm -hmm. you know. I was like, man, get your hands off me, man. I'm gonna call all my homeboys. <laughs> but you know, we. I mean, I knew. He, I knew it wasn't. wasn't he wasn't serious like like that because he he known me since I was like fifteen. Who oh, you know, just should, should, should. just being around Dre. So he knew me since I was a little kid. But he was he was mad about that. But uh, in in the documentary, but it's, it's only real. I mean, it's real real stuff. I and, mean, what you want me to do? In the documentary, did it's did Suge have? a distaste towards you because you didn't sign and, and made things difficult when it came to either, even your music or going back and using Nate, going back and using Snoop? Uh, nah, I, I think it was more because I was uh, with Russell and Lior. Mm -hmm. Def you know? Jam. Yeah, and, um, you know, he probably just felt like I should have been, well, he had to feel like I should have been over there. But, I mean, when I was trying to, you know, stay down for the crown, you know, it, it wasn't, it, you know, they, they wasn't feeling me. So I had to go on to do my own thing. When there's a, and I don't want to give away too much of the documentary because I want people to see it. Yeah. But there was one thing when the Chronic album is taken off and now it's time to go on tour. Mm -hmm. Do you know what story I'm about to ask you about? Yeah. Please explain this story here. I mean, it, it, I didn't get a ticket. You know, I didn't have an airplane ticket, and uh, and you really went to the airport. Yeah, I was you in the car. You packed up to go remember, to the tour. Remember, uh, uh, my, uh, I, um, uh, MC uh, Breeze. Mm -hmm. Remember Breeze? Yes. I was in the car when I when I didn't go. I jumped in the car with him and my home girl Samara, and they dropped me off in Long Beach. So you went to the, you packed, went to the airport. I didn't even pack. I was you just, just ready, ready to I go. I was ready to mash. And you were at the airport. Yeah. And everybody else was there. Yeah. Ready to go on tour. Yeah. And you didn't have a ticket. I didn't have a ticket. So you go back I home. I got in the car. I got, like I said, I got in the car with some more and Breeze and got on. Went to Long Beach. That was it. I was like, it's, and it's And you over. say when you go back, you 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 back on like floors and. On the floor with my turntable, my MPC 60 and my Crater Records. And, and the record that you had so much to do with mm -hmm. is taken off. Well, that this was, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, pretty much. How do you not be bitter, or were you? I, ain't, I, ain't, I, you know, I, I ain't bitter. Um, I was just down with, down with my family. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just down with them and just mashing with them. That's it. What would know? they say when they would? Did they ever call from the road, or they try to not? 
No, nah, I didn't. Yeah. It, it, cell phones. I don't. I didn't have a cell phone back then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not right. Right around that time, I didn't have no. Nah, it was. You know the little yeah yeah. Key. <laughs> Leave a message. Like damn, <laughs> missed it. You know <laughs> the rotaries. You don't dial it right. So oh, what? Do, what do they say when you when you're not on the tour? Like like what does what does Dre say or Snoop or or Nate or any any of them? Do y'all have that conversation of why? Never. Why were you not on the tour? I don't know. You know I don't. I ain't never tried to ask or see. But mm-hmm. one thing I can say. That was was a blessing. Uh, tell me, is when Dre said, "You know, you gotta go on and be your own man mm. and create your own lane." Mm-hmm. What do you, you think know? he meant by that? Because I know what he meant, but did it also mean you don't you? I don't think you really want to be over here. Was there pretty a- much? That's probably what it was, you know. But I, I, I would I couldn't see it, you right? Know? But he probably seen something that I didn't see, so. You know, that was a straight up blessing. I, I do have to ask, why why let us in now, Warren? Mm-hmm. Like why do the documentary for somebody that's always been so extremely private? Uh I mean, just letting the new generation just I want the new generation to, to see, you know, what it took for us to be who we are, you know, like the things that we went through so they can understand, you know, that you know the records that you know a lot of records that's being done now is like strip club and this that and this it's not just about that we had records like that but then we would we would talk about the social social issues Mm -hmm. and uh Mm -hmm. it's just showing them that the things that we went through like the riots and all that it turned into to uh everything uh not just one top subject a topic it it that was in there, and we you had all of this just mixed up in, in a, a, a big gumbo pot. And um, I just wanted to see that and, uh, and just know, you know, know what I contributed to uh, hip-hop here on the West Coast also. Mm-hmm. When, we, when we think about G-Funk, what is G-Funk and where did that come from, Warren? Well, I was, I was put on, uh, made G-Funk by Above the Law, um, which is... Code 187, mm-hmm. uh, KMG, Go Mac, and Total Chaos, and Laylaw. Um, they had took me in, you know, when I was real young, around, you know, in the very beginning stages when I used to hang out up there at Audio Achievements. Um, they took me in, and I didn't really have no place to go. So they took me in, and I used to live with uh, 187 and Laylaw. And uh, go back then. Uh, well, one eighty seven and Laylaw and uh, Colton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, they made me part of G Funk, you know. And and when the whole thing with them, with Ruthless and all that stuff, and all everything started dying away, we we kept that. We kept it, brought it back. Mm-hmm. Like can't let that get away because that that was a uh uh them them I I looked up to them so. I just kept pushing the name and I took it worldwide and then wanted to make it into a genre mm-hmm. of music, you know, and, and Dre the same way. He, he part of that too, you know, uh, as far as G G funk, you know? Um, but what, what I did is I just, I took it worldwide, you know, when it was fading out, I, I took it back and brought it and took it worldwide. And hopefully one day they can document it as a genre of music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I know, I know that we do. <clears throat> You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. yeah. Hey, how hard is it for you not to have told everybody how beneficial you were to early careers and things that we seen take off, or or did you just not? Did you really just not trip on a lot of the stuff? I ain't. I ain't. I ain't really. I didn't trip off of nothing really. I mean, I just, you know, I, I look at it like this. You know, um, if if, if you riding with me a hundred percent, you know, you'll be there for me here. You'll be here. For me there, uh, and uh, I mean it's just like you know I, I I look at it just like like I say I look at it like uh, I'm down I'm down, when I'm down with you I'm down with you mm-hmm. you know were no you ever what. mad at Nate Dog or Snoop? Never, I would I ain't never been mad at none of them, never, never. Um, I tried to get Nate Dog to come with me uh, over there at Def Jam though. Oh really? Like yeah. back back back. Back in the days, yeah, like when, what, right when I did regulate around that time. So I want to get into regulate, mm-hmm. like 
do you do you find a situation where Def Jam is you know no longer putting out the LLs, the Public Enemies, and this this is pre Jay Z and all this stuff where yeah. where they need that next thing, yeah. And here comes Warren G. Now early on, how did you and Mr. Grimm? How did that come together when we heard when we first heard Indo Smoke? Wow, um, I met Mr. Grimm. Uh, Damn, I'm trying to. Where did I meet Mr. Graham at again? Mm-hmm. Graham probably like, man, really, Warren? <laughs> no, no, uh, yeah, I know he is gonna be like, but uh, I met Mr. Graham and uh, it was him and uh, was another cat named Zagu. Mm-hmm. Uh, Graham and Zagu, I met them. I, it was at a, I met him somewhere. It was at a, like a open mic thing, uh, and uh. I worked with both of them, and then Zagu had, I don't know what happened. He just started doing his own thing, so me and Mr. Grimm started working. And uh, I had uh, Dead to Beat, mm-hmm. and I was just like, man, why don't we do this song together? And, and so that's Endo Smoke. Mm-hmm. And Nate is on Endo Smoke as well. Yeah. Now, how does that come from when you guys put it together and when it comes to uh, a song that we get a chance to hear? Like how do, whose uh, hand does that does that get into? It would all we did. Well, what we did is me and Graham just we just did our verses. Um, I, I actually wrote some of Graham's parts. Mm. You know, I gave him uh, the H and R Puff, the stuff in your lungs, mm. smoking on the chronic, getting it's straight true. sprung. You know, that was that was, and then he came and stretched, taking to the, the, the you know what I'm saying. It, <clears throat> but um, we we laid it down, man. We just. Wanted to do something different. We laid it down. And I called Nate. Like I always do. I called. I said, Nate, I got this song. It's, it's, it's a hit. Come up. I need you to get on it. Nate, come on up. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Whatever you do, this yeah. ain't no joke. <laughs> that man. <laughs> this ain't no stress. It's the motherfucking in no smoke. That right yeah. there. Are you yeah. high yeah. yet? I remember losing my mind when I first heard yeah. that. And what's your relationship like with Paul Stewart at that time? Uh, Paul, um, this that was before Paul, mm-hmm. you know. But me and Paul relationship started. Um, it was uh, one day we was at well, everybody was at the studio uh, recording. It was for Snoop's album, and, and John Singleton and Paul came up there to get um, records for uh, uh, Poetic Justice. Mm-hmm. So. I was up there, you know, up there with all with visiting everybody, hanging out like we usually do. Still, fam, this was after I had bounced, you know, and uh, so I'm I'm up in there, uh, working and stuff, you know, hanging out, and uh, <clears throat> they was like, we looking for songs for the soundtrack. So I I told Paul, I said, look, I got a a song in my car, so let's go to, go out here, let me go get it. So I got it, uh, popped it in the cassette date. I said date. Yeah. Popped it in the cassette uh, cassette deck, and uh, I played maybe like twenty seconds of it. He was like, "Stop!" He said, "Hold up, let me take. Can I have this?" I said, "Yeah, take it." So he took it, and uh, he let John hear it, and they called me like I think it was like a day or two later, and he was like, "We want this to be our first single for the mm-hmm. Poetic Justice soundtrack." So we did the deal. I had got some money in my pocket. I was charged. <laughs> <laughs> And but you know what? Uh, before that, uh, Tupac, Tupac and Breed, they actually though they was actually the first guys to give me a shot at at uh, producing. You know, professionally, I did that. You got to get yours. I got to get, get mine. mine. That was the first professional Damn. record I ever did. And then I did after that. I did Breed's a uh, whole album. I did his whole album. Then I did uh, Tupac, The Thug Life. Uh, I did Definition of a Thug. Mm. Who was on. It was also on the uh, Poetic Justice, and I did the uh, How Long Will They Mourn Me? Wow. What was and your relationship? What was your relationship like with Tupac? It was great. He was cool. You know, cool cat. Uh, it was just like we come in and he say, "Warren, play something." I put on the beat. He will sit there with one of them little hats with the little ball. Yeah, on yeah, it. They ain't <laughs> bouncing yeah. Around. He bouncing around, and then he just. He would tell the, the engineer, turn the mic on. He'd go in there and, you know, first he w- we would talk. You know, he'd like ask me, like, what's up with you? Like, what's going on? So I, I told him everything I was going through at that time. I was hurt, uh, crushed. Uh, hurt and crushed I, over what? I wasn't with my 
people. I wasn't with yeah. Snoop. Yeah. I wasn't with Dre. I wasn't with nobody. So I was just like kind of depressed. And I was telling him, you know, like, you know, what I was on, like, you know, I, so, you know, but he, the cold, the crazy thing about that is that I, I didn't even believe that that was him calling me. Uh, the first time um, he got at me to do, uh, uh, you know what, damn, you know what, I got to get yours, I got to get mine, came after uh, uh, Definition of a Thug because Tupac, I did endo smoke and then Tupac got at me to do, to do, to do, uh, to do uh, a record for him because he heard endo smoke and he called me and I was like, who was this? He was like, Tupac. I said, this ain't Tupac, and I hung up on him. Oh, my God. I said, because at that time, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Somebody trying to set mm -hmm. me up. Tricks on me. So he called again. It was like, this is Tupac. And uh, I said, this is Tupac. He said, yeah, man, this is Tupac. So he said, man, you did you do the, the endo smoke? I said, yeah. He said, I'm up at Echo Sound. I want you mm -hmm. to come up here and uh, play some beats for me. So I, I, I said, you had Echo Sound. So... I grabbed my drum machine, grabbed my records. I had a four five, grabbed that, Hello. jumped in my regal, mashed up there. And when I got up there, came in, it was him. And uh he was just start we sat there and he just talked to me, you know. And that's at that time, that's when I was like really depressed. Like, mm -hmm. but he talked to me and I was telling him everything I was going through. I was like, I'm hungry, like starving. And uh uh he laid it out, man. That was that. That actually was one of the first times that I did a session where it was a gang of beautiful women. Yeah, they said he <laughs> would do that sometimes. Oh so. my God, he brought in all these beautiful women, and 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 I that was you know they were smoking blunts. Mm -hmm. I was a zigzag guy, so I'm like, what is that? <laughs> 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 and uh, at the at the same time, uh, Big Psych, uh, Little Psych, Mac Ten, mm -hmm. uh, Rated R, all of them, they they came in there. And uh, said they homeboy Cato had got smoked in Detroit, mm -hmm. and he asked, said Warren, you got something for that? So I, that's when I played the How Long Will They Warm Me beat. Damn. And he called Nate. I said, Nate, come up here and get on this song. So I had Nate come up there and get on How Long Will They Warm Me. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Man, you could probably do this day in and day out. You, oh, yeah. Like stories that you probably yeah. don't even think are like big stories. Yeah. Somebody else would be like, damn. Oh, yeah. And we hear that Pac always was quick to work. Oh, my yeah. God. You saw Fast. that? Yeah. Everything I sat there and talked to him about, he put it in the definition of a thug, nigga, and he switched up a few things, but he he put all of that in there. And I was like, wow. I said, this dude using some of the stuff that we just talked about. And then he was like, well, can you do something with the hook? And that's when I got on the turntables. Mm -hmm. If it is the season to mm -hmm. be serving, what you doing? Mop, mobbing like a mop. Oh. Now it is the season to, to, dip, 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 to be serving. It was hard. Warren, what's going down with G-Funk now? Uh, right now I'm uh, working with, with two, two uh, young artists that I feel could really make a big impact um, on the West Coast and in music across the country and in the world. Uh, it's a young kid named Savi Third. Um, he like on the major hot sheet right now as far as the next out of out of LA uh California period and then uh I got Mike Slice um he's 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 from Orange County that's my like M&M mm -hmm. he he's dope um really studied the game um and I don't really have to have to teach him a whole lot but because he studies you know, and both of those two guys right there is going to make a lot of noise, man. So that's what I've been on. And um, I'm going to give them some new music, man. I'm, I'm going to go on and put, you know, put some music out there, man. They asking for it. Mm -hmm. But it's just got to be set up right and done right. And then I'll let it out. I know everybody like, when you going to drop something? It's got to be right. You know, I ain't going to just put a record out there without anything behind it. So. Hey, Warren, do you feel like now that, and maybe it was our time too, but do you feel like now that the music, even the business is disrespectful mm -hmm. as far as, you know, like there's no, there's no real respect for the OGs anymore. Even when you hear people that come out and they say certain things about Big mm -hmm. and Pac and this, right. you know, there were just some things that you just, you just didn't touch. And even if you felt a certain way, there was a code to it. Do yeah. you feel like now that we just say anything to say anything? Yeah, they, they just don't know. Mm. You know, they just don't know. I mean, you can't really, 
you know, try to uh, discredit a person if you haven't learned who they, they are. Mm-hmm. So you got to get his music and listen to what he was talking about. And uh, then you can say if you like him or not. Mm-hmm. But um, they just don't know. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these artists that do uh, say stuff like that, they just don't know. And they need to learn their history. And not only about Tupac, but about hip-hop, period, because you in hip-hop. And mm-hmm. You claim hip-hop, so you got to learn about it, you know. Or you'll just be one of those guys that's in and out, you know. And it's been a lot of those lately. Yeah. Do you still? Do out. you still? Are you still a fan of music, Warren? I'm a huge fan of music. Right. Um, I was in uh, Pittsburgh just a couple weeks ago, and uh, Kendrick was there, and uh, I heard he was there, so I, I hit Top Dog like, man, can you plug me? He laid it out for me off the chain. Mm-hmm. Big up to Top Dog. What up, Top? <laughs> you don't do that for and, me. What uh, was up, Top? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And uh. Uh, we went and uh, but the cold the cold thing about when I went I I went because he's I really love what he do his music is is he's just so so articulate with what he do and as far as his performance to on on record and uh, I didn't know that the guy one of the artists that I'm working with Savvy Third that was like the biggest artist like he's his Michael Jackson mm-hmm. and I didn't know mm-hmm. and he told me that and he was and then he. We got we got backstage and then Kendrick came out. Everybody came. J Rock, everybody, Schoolboy Q came out to get, greet us and give us show us love. And they told Savi, they said we work out to your music. Wow. He was like, Damn. <laughs> he had that want to get away. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that blew his mind. And uh, he he uh, cause that's who he looked up to, Kendrick. That's the guy he looked up to. So it was just like Wait, Kendrick to even just know who he, he is he, is like. I seen damn. It, I, I thought he was gonna cry. Mm-hmm. You told him, man up. Yeah, and <laughs> man, <laughs> he, he was asshole. trying to roll a blunt. He was just his hands right. were shaking. Oh so Kendrick pulled oh. him to the side and chopped it up for him. You know, chopped it up with him for a minute, and you know, I I was like, man, I I had to do this like Kendrick, nigga. Mm-hmm. That was that was that was. And that you know what's the truth, man? Is that at one point Kendrick looked at somebody else like that. Yeah. Right. And then somebody gonna look at Savi like that as well. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, and it goes full circle. Yeah. It goes full circle. Just yeah. continue that hard hard work too. Warren, were you ever really mad mm-hmm. off of everything that happened? Mm-mm, never. Damn. It yeah, happened. Yeah. You know what? And don't take this the wrong way. Yeah. It happened to the right person then, well, because. Okay. Everybody couldn't really sit and say, nah. Nah. you know, I, I'm looking at a hundred plus million what Death Row was worth then and what, yeah. uh, whatever it's worth now just in catalog. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at at Snoop and, and Nate and what Pac and, you know, what yeah. I'm saying? everything. And I'm, I'm thinking like, man, I'm a branch, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Or I'm a root yeah. to this. And, and you never got mad, mad. I'm still working on my, my, I haven't reached my plateau. Yet. Yeah, I'm still your working. legacy. Yeah, I'm still working on it, you know, uh, building and, and, you know, get you know, make it happen. But I ain't, you know, I'm, I just keep working, man. Mm-hmm. That's it. I hey, working. Warren, when, when things were looking good mm-hmm. as far as, you know, albums were selling, everything mm-hmm. was going, how bad were things for you? Like, I heard you saying sleeping on floors. Like, is that, is that why... The chronic and while death row was going, are you still doing bad? That was after that, mm. you know, uh, when I went back back to the hood, you know, after the airport thing, I went back to the hood, and um, I mean, it, 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 it I mean, did it, any it, of the homies say, "Man, what are you doing here?" Mm-mm. I was in the house, <laughs> but in the apartment. <laughs> yeah, <Wow. laughs> I was I wasn't even moving around because I had got into a a, a situation like. Right around that 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 time, I got into a situ- like a, a serious situation, like gunplay. Mm-hmm. So it, it wasn't good for me to walk around because so, I was into it with, with somebody around that time. And I, you know, I was. Is everything over now? Because I don't oh, even want all, you it's here. All, oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's all, it's all over. That was that was just young. young okay, I was stuff. gonna say I only want you. I mean, here. but you gotta okay. understand in those times, I say from eighty eight to about ninety ninety six. Uh, uh, this place here was ten times worse than Chicago and all and all those other places. Now, right now, Indianapolis is probably the most dangerous crazy, place on huh? earth. 
It's crazy how when we used to be, Indiana. we used wow. to be like the murder capital. Yeah. And then now you see other places and you're like, damn. Yeah. We weren't yeah. allowed to be outside in the street and playing. Yeah, like at curfew. one point, like <laughs> my mom was like, hell no, get in. Like yeah. you're not going to be outside. And it remember sucks. you knew the cold. Like, like yeah. now you look at people, you're like, oh, he wearing red. He wearing blue. He wearing yeah. gray. He wearing brown. Now, yeah. but back then, if you wore, you, you were going to either live or die yeah. for it. Because yeah. for one, you shouldn't have wore it. Yeah. And I remember, man, bloods, they skip and crips, yeah. they crip walk. Yeah. And nobody else was doing that. Unless nah. you were ready for it, yeah, it was it wasn't a popular dance. Real, yeah. Oh yeah, man! Yeah. You remember going to concerts saying, "All right, what you gonna wear?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how uh, we going? Uh, gray sweatshirt. Yeah, uh, either some black, black. Oh yeah, uh, but you long beach though. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's easy call. <laughs> Hell yeah, that, you know what I'm saying? Or, like, or, or I wear a a gold sweatshirt of black Levi's. You know, just different. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just different. Yeah, we uh, made it though. Warren, you got a. Uh, a catering business? Yeah, uh, Sniffing Griffin's Barbecue. Sniffing yeah. Griffin's. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I heard that. Oh, yeah. Now, do you cater regular people stuff or is it just well, all? Right now, it's only it's only corporate. Oh, really? Uh, Sniffing Griffin. Yes, it's corporate. Uh, so when we do our next thing, we can hit you up for yeah. Sniffing Griffin? Yeah. Definitely. We Definitely. always get bad food. We need to get that. some good food. I remember food. I was telling him this one thing. I guarantee you, it's bite through, not fight through. Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> do you have that protected? <laughs> Yeah, did you trademark that? Because I'm going to take that myself. <laughs> I'll take it from him. Get that for me, Monica. I guarantee you it's bite through, not fight through. Because I know Warren, I know Warren, he he he, he kind of nonchalant. I have that all knocked up and all <laughs> trademarked before you even know, go to go get it. You know what I'm saying? So when was your last, when was your last event? Um, well, I'm getting ready to, uh, well, I did the, uh, um, the Levi's. Uh, oh, you really doing corporate, Dang. huh? Yeah. I think you all bad, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean it. I remember it's one time, good. man, I waited around for you for like five, six hours because you was frying chicken. <laughs> you don't really remember that, huh? I'm, You're like, man, I'm on my way. I'm, on, I'm like, dude, what are you doing frying this chicken? I'm like, <laughs> am I really waiting for you to finish you know, frying I, chicken? I think, you know what? I, I think I remembered. I was at the. Uh, it was at a studio. Actually, they had a kitchen in there. And he was he was frying chicken. Vincent, and I'm, Vincent Herbert was in there too. And I was, <laughs> should that make me feel better? <laughs> no. Oh, <okay. laughs> And what about your son, man? What's going on with your son? Please tell tell everybody uh, what's happening with yeah, your little yeah. one. Oh, he doing his thing, man. He mm -hmm. at USC, um, freshman, and he just want to come in and compete and, and help, you know, bring him back to being number one again. Mm -hmm. you know, he's been doing it since he. At was one point, you and five you and old. you and Snoop Dogg, y'all mm -hmm. sons was like mm -hmm. kind of in the league as far as the kid at, at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and then it was a Cordell. Yeah, that when he went to UCLA, mm -hmm. and then I saw Snoop explain that you know he was like, "Man, Dad, it just wasn't for me." Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you pull your son in and be like, "Hey, man, no, this is for you." Do you tell him <laughs> that? Like, nah, I mean, I just let him do him. I, I'm just a dad, man. I mm -hmm. just whatever he want to do, I'm gonna support him. Um, I don't, I, I ain't trying to make him do and anything. He at you USC. Know? Yeah. Did you go to college? Mm -mm. No, 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 not even like a city I college. Get in city we going. I tried to get in Long Beach City. Oh, they wouldn't let me in. There. All you got to do is pay per <laughs> unit. Yeah. How, How did you not get in? City? City? I got in city college. I, I had, I didn't, I, I had to go back and get my, uh, my diploma for city college. No, yeah, you. They, they yeah, told you, you something. I, I went. They sent me to Reed, and Reed was. Uh, oh my God, Reed was where all the pregnant girls were. At. You know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Reed, Reed was where all the thugs, and and, all the bad kids. Was yeah. like like a continuation or something. Yeah, yes. I had to go there and get my my diploma, and uh, they sent me right in there with a gang of people I knew, and it was cracking. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was fun. But I, I had to I had to focus and say, you know what, I got to get my diploma. I got to get my diploma. So I went and got it, and. Uh, it, after that, I, I just didn't even try no more. I just, I said, I'm going to do this music for a Is time. Is it crazy that you couldn't get into Long Beach City College <laughs> and your son is at U USC? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's a trip. We did My dad right. went to Long Beach State. See? Mm -hmm. And then you took a little time off. You know what uh, I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but, but you had to make it right for your son, too. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I just... um. I don't know, man. He just, he just always his actually his old his old Warren, his, uh, my oldest son. He always wanted to be like him, so he used to do everything Warren would do. And uh, Warren was old enough to play, and he would be on the sideline. He'd be the water boy, mm -hmm. and uh, 
when they run a sprints, he'd be running sprints with them. The coach used to get mad at the players because he was running just as fast as them. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, so he, awesome. he just kept doing it until he could play. And how how he, dope are those dad moments now? Like huh? just seeing him at USC. That's a trip. You know, they they he get a little cocky here and there. Like, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Yeah, yeah, Check yeah. Out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I ain't mad at him. You know, he having a good time. Uh, I'm just letting him do him, you know, just do him. And I don't get all in his mix. Um, I just tell him to just be safe, you know, and don't. Don't document your every move. Right, mm-hmm. not now, of you course. Know, on social media, just just mm-hmm. just stay to yourself and just you know be humble, be respected, uh, respectable to everybody. And if somebody disrespects you, but he know you, that you made uh, ain't mm-hmm. no fun, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, just wondering, oh, yeah. <laughs> Mister <laughs> Mr. Holier Than right. Thou. You know what I mean, son? That's just a song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some lyrics. Yeah, oh, yeah, my verse wasn't that bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Warren? What was the creation of Regulate? Um. Uh, Man, uh, from the regulators. Yeah. Uh, well, we used to say uh, regulate just around, just up at death row around them times. We just say, man, we got to regulate this. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody tripping or something, we're going to go regulate this. Or, man, you got to regulate that. Mm-hmm. You know, th- we used to do that. So that that's where it, the name came from. And uh, uh, regulators mount up came from Young Guns mm-hmm. also. Um, and, uh, that was one of my favorite movies, and that's actually where I got the intro from. I had uh, took the VCR, my VCR recorder, you know, from watching the movie so much. I took the numbers, and right before the number, right before it started, I, wow. I put it in my MPC sixty, and just sampled uh, each part where I wanted it. And I would stop it, rewind it, and I sampled the other part. So I sampled <laughs> regulators. Regulate any steel in this property. Mm-hmm. We're damn good too. Mm-hmm. But you can't be any geek off the street. Gotta be handy with the steel, if you know what I mean? Earn your keep. And then that's when I said, Regulators, because he said, Regulators. <laughs> Mount up. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, regulators. Uh, uh, Char- uh, not Charlie, uh, Emilio. Emilio, Estevez. yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I, I put everything together and um, um, I, I, um, the, the the way I found regulate, I was digging through the ca- digging through the crates, and uh, just wanted to. I said to myself, "What if I did a rap over this? Mm-hmm. That'd be way different from what everybody doing." Because I don't want to do nothing like dark and all that stuff. I want to make people feel good. So did the did the sample, sampled it up, and uh, I called Nate over. I said, "Come, with Nate, I got a banger." Actually, you know what? I played it for him. I did it, and I played it in the, uh, we was in a limo the, going to do a show. Me, Graham, uh, Nate, and the twins, we, I, we had a sh- show where we was doing Endo Smoke. And uh, Nate started freestyling to it, you know, and he started, he said something, uh, chicken head. Is that, that's in the documentary mm-hmm. too, yeah. Up to my phone, some stupid, mm-mm, trying to come into my home. He said, um, contemplate now do i hit the mm-hmm. i didn't want to say the no name. say it puss well yeah <laughs> puss. <laughs> and i remember it just in the documentary you're like man we could do that on my album <laughs> yeah yeah i said we could do that on my album man but then when we when we got when i got a chance to sit with it i i uh just formatted it <clears throat> with everything that i was thinking uh formatted it and i told nate i said what I want you to do is, is instead of just singing like you an R&B guy, O'Brien was his favorite artist. I said, man, just like sing rap, like like you singing. Mm-hmm. And um, So I said, I'm going to do four bars, and then you come in after me and do four bars. So we kept going. We did did it until we got to uh, 16. And, uh, and uh, after that, uh, we just left the hook open for people just imagination to like, cause we told the story. So then we left their imagination wide open and then we came back in to into the story again, like starting another story and then, and then just left, left their imagination again. So they thinking about what just happened. And then we kind of mellowed it out on everything that went down. Now this is the ending of the whole situation and it ended up being good. You know, man, it's yeah. a great story tale oh, yeah. too, oh, yeah. man. Oh yeah. It's a great I mean, and it's, it's a combination of things that I went through, Nate went through, and Snoop went through, and, and our friends and our, our homeboys from us, you know, just being 
young guys in in the neighborhood uh, trying to survive. So they really took your rings and your Rolex. Oh, it was a lot of that happening. It wasn't mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but but the story was there. <laughs> yeah, to tell. <laughs> yes, indeed. G Funk is the documentary, man. YouTube Premium. Make sure you guys mm-hmm. go check that out. And it's it's something that I feel everyone needs to watch. And like I say, Warren, it is a documentary. That was told the right way by the right person. And there was absolutely no spite to it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Carm Gill, Carm, the director, Carm Gill, he uh, he did a good job, man. Nah, he I did a great job. met him at the at the observatory. He was just him and two little scrungy dudes just trying to get on. I don't think they're going to like being called scrungy <laughs> dudes. But. I, I mean, if you, if, if you come from, on, I, yeah, man. but I mean, you could have said two dudes trying to get on, but you talking about scrunchy and you know what I'm saying, like. Well, now I ain't gonna. Well, well you said it. it no, no, well, no, no, no. That's what they said. Two scrunchy dudes. Yeah, that's what you felt about it. You know what I'm saying? If you felt like they were scrungy, you know what I'm saying? Then, then yeah. there it is. They can't. But you know those those little dirty scrunchy motherfuckers. Yeah. They uh did great work. Yeah, and they're you know part what I'm of saying? history. With they scrungy asses, yeah. man. And they are yeah. part of history. That's part hey, those scrungy guys <laughs> are a part of your history. Oh yeah. No, nah, but thank you for coming into the thank neighborhood. Much love, man. man. And nothing but much continued success. And we thank sit you. down when you're ready to bring your artists to us as well. For sure. You know what I'm saying? And see and see what this next journey is like with Warren yes, G. Indeed. Because we already know what the last one was. Oh yeah. All righty, y'all stick around, y'all radios, big boys big neighborhood. Boy.